Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of CameraLabs.com. Towards the end of April 2011, I boarded a number of flights to take me from Queenstown, New Zealand, all the way to Orlando in the United States of America in an attempt to view one of the final space shuttle launches. So what kind of camera do you need to photograph the space shuttle? Well, I'd suggest something with quite powerful magnification, considering it's some distance away from the viewing location. So before I head off to Florida tomorrow, I've actually collected a number of items that I've rented from a store in San Francisco. And I make no apology for the gear porn that follows. So inside this bag here is my kit. This is my setup. So let's see what I've got. Here's the big gun. This is a Canon EOS 7D with a Canon 500mm f4L lens. This is the really big boy and this is what I'm going to be using to take still photos of the space shuttle. That slots conveniently in there. I've got a backup body here. This is a Canon T3i or EOS 600D. This is going to be shooting video. That goes in there. I've also got a Canon 70-300L lens here. That's also going to be shooting video because I've got an additional camera which is filming this segment now and that's going to be shooting video with another lens. I've got two microphones, one that's recording the sound you hear now and another one here. Notice the, uh, the rather furry attachment here which hopefully gets rid of some of the wind. I've got a pair of small binoculars here and in the lid of the bag I've got the ubiquitous laptop. All in all, this bag weighs over 20 kilograms, and already, even though I've only been carrying it around for a few hours, it weighs a ton. But hopefully I'll be able to get it on the airline as carry-on luggage, and uh, no one will blink an eye as I breeze through check-in. By the way, that was a Think Tank Airport Acceleration version 2 bag, and it worked out pretty well for my trip. If you'd like to find out more about that bag, I've got a full review of it at Cameralabs.com. Anyway, I hiked up to the Marin Headlands to get this shot of the Golden Gate Bridge at sunset. Look at that illuminated section halfway along. Here it is with the 500mm mounted on an EOS 7D body. And because that's a crop frame sensor, it's delivering equivalent coverage of 800mm for a really tight view. Now I had the lens resting on a post and you can see the image stabilisation floating a little bit. This lens ended up being one of my favourites for the whole trip. But hang on, I'm getting ahead of myself. I've now got to fly all the way from San Francisco to Florida. Because, of course, I'm going to photograph the Space Shuttle. And here it is, Space Shuttle Endeavour on the launch pad. Unfortunately getting repaired after the failed attempt to launch it on April 29th. That means that I missed seeing the launch and there I was with a 500mm in Florida. What do you do? you head to the beach. I was staying in Cocoa Beach which was actually really nice and the 500mm proved perfect for those beach shots, especially of surfers. Here's some video of a kite surfer again with the 7D and I'm actually hand holding the 500mm here swinging quite a wide arc and it really surprised me that it was quite possible to hand hold the 500mm in these circumstances. But I found the 500mm was not just perfect for beach shots of people. These are the Vieira wetlands, about half an hour's drive from my hotel on Cocoa Beach. I've had to cross two big rivers, although perhaps they're sea inlets to get here. It's just right at the end of the road. You've got these wetlands, uh, which is a real haven for birds. The idea is, is you just drive around this uh, road at about 10 miles an hour and stop whenever you see something. And then when you do, you get your weapon of choice and start taking pictures out the window. So, let's see what we can see. All of these videos of birds were filmed with the Canon EOS 7D and the EF 500mm f4L lens, generally closed to about f5 to 5.6 to be a bit more forgiving. Now I was actually filming from a tripod, I was using a Manfrotto 055CX Pro 3 with a 393 head, that's a very special bracket that's designed to accommodate really big heavy lenses. The lens actually hangs upside down from the bracket and it really allows you to move it very smoothly and easily. Now even though I was on a tripod I had image stabilisation enabled and that was to eliminate the wobbles that I was seeing from quite a strong buffeting wind, it proved quite effective. Anyway then I moved from Vieira Wetlands over to Merritt Island National Refuge, that's actually part of NASA's own grounds and here photograph from inside the car is a log, no it's an alligator, no it's a log, I'm sure I saw it blink. Anyway, this final shot was also taken from inside the car with the aperture open to f4 and look at that shallow depth of field. This lens is fantastic for that effect. 
It's pretty good fun. Maybe there's something in this. I then flew back to San Francisco where I grabbed this shot of Lombard Street, one of the, if not the, twistiest and steepest streets in the world. This was filmed with a 500mm and 7D from a distance of about a mile and a half, and you can really see the shimmering from the heat rising. Now for the end of this video I'm going to take you back to Florida where around the Port Canaveral area you can get some great sunset shots. This was again filmed with a 500mm but I've switched from the EOS 7D to the EOS 600D or Rebel T3i. So I'm still working at an equivalent of 800mm but with the option of one very special facility. And here it is. This is the digital zoom mode on that camera. Now when you've got it set to its minimum setting, it doesn't actually magnify the image, it simply takes a crop from the middle of the sensor. So it's still full HD, it's still 1080p, but this time you're effectively magnifying the image by a further two and a half times. So instead of 800mm, I'm working at an equivalent of about 2000mm, and look at the size of the sun. Also look above the sun right now, and you can see a plane flying past with an afterburner firing. I didn't even notice that fighter jet when I was filming this, it just appeared in the edit. Anyway, the really remarkable thing for me during this week in Florida, and also my couple of days in San Francisco, was how flexible the 500mm f4L lens was. I used it more than anything else in my kit. It really is a fun lens to use, and you can find out a lot more about it in my full review at cameralabs.com. There you'll also find sample images that you can download to take a really close look at the quality. But don't get me wrong, I'm not going to encourage you to go out and buy a lens that costs the best part of 7,000 US dollars. There's no need to do that. For my trip, I actually rented one. I went to a company called borrowlenses.com, which rented me this lens for around 300 US dollars for one week. Now, that's still not an insignificant amount of money, but it did allow me to get hold of this absolutely amazing, top quality professional lens just for the period that I wanted it. And it allowed me to get those shots of surfers, of wildlife, and the sunset shots that you see here. It really was a fun lens to have on this trip, and I'd highly recommend it.